the sort of default value that you're li- most likely to walk out with, at least in Illinois, in most of the courtrooms, you're going to walk out with every other weekend and four hours on Wednesdays or every other weekend and maybe four hours on Tuesdays and Thursdays for nine months of that child's you know, that, uh, the mm-hmm. school time until that child reaches 18. Uh, you're talking about going from a father, very typically having daily engagement with a child, to if it's every other Wednesday, if it's Wednesday's uh, midweek visits, to going that child having to go for seven days every other week without seeing their father at all, possibly. Right. Okay, so that's the problem. So we've got this, you know, we've got this uh, solution that's been offered for over 30 years that is rather polarizing from the child's viewpoint. Mm-hmm. And that causes the child, it magnifies their loss. It makes the child feel that they've lost one of their parents. You can talk to family counselors, they'll tell you this. We don't feel that that's nearly as necessary as it's being you know, carried out. We feel that the, um, the judges need our support and the attorneys need our advocacy to move the judicial practice forward so that it uh, looks for ways in those hearings for the other to be more inclusive of that non-custodial parent to protect their uh, time so that it's more frequent, it's mm-hmm. meaningful, uh, and, it, and it maximizes their involvement. Now, I often encounter the argument of, well, I've always been the primary caregiver, so I should be given more custodial time. I mean, what would you say to a parent who takes that attitude? Well, that has been addressed by some national spokespersons that they say, first of all, that really penalizes somebody who may well have been sacrificing their time with the child for the sake of earning income to support the whole family for years prior to the divorce. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly they find out they're divorced, and now their future relationship with the child as a single parent is being measured on what they did last year when they didn't know they were going to end up being a single parent, but they thought they were going to have an opportunity as that child got older into grade school or high school. They thought they were going to be much more involved. They just thought this was temporary, that they were sacrificing this time. They didn't know they were going to get hit with a permanent lifelong penalty for it. Right. So that's one thing I would say back to somebody like that. And the other thing I would, I would say is that, uh, that we can uh, point to is that you cannot predict uh, the future, what's best for the... You can't measure the dynamics of what's best for that child in terms of the inclusion of both parents now that they're divorced based on what they were like when they were all in one household. Mm-hmm. Uh, even things as subtle when they were all in one household, when both parents had their coats hanging on the coat rack, both parents had their photographs mounted and, and sitting up on, on the mantelpiece, these are all signs and signals to the child that both parents were there in their lives. I mean, there's other ways than just actual physical presence. That uh, Just hearing about the other parent, you know, wait until your other parent gets home. We're going to talk about this. There you're going to be in, in trouble your... when your father gets home. <laughs> right. And I tried to stay away from the stereotype. But that's the way it goes. That is the stereotype. Those are the things that give that child the signals that they have an engaged engagement with that other parent, even if they're not physically present. Well, now suddenly that has to be compensated for in the post-divorce scenario for that child. Otherwise, the child's going to be have some degree of problems. Right. Do you think there is um, sort of an ideal custody schedule? Um, well, if you're talking about uh, ideal schedule of, of parenting and parenting time, you know, I think it's going to vary. Uh, in our organization, we've talked about that a lot. We are a new organization, by the way. Uh, mm-hmm. We don't purport to have all the answers. <laughs> we spend a lot of time talking to other parents and uh, judges and attorneys about that very thing. Uh, what is the ideal uh, parenting schedule? We do not have one. We don't have a, like I say, we don't have a cookie cutter solution. We just know that the, the cookie cutter that's being used now isn't the right size. That's one thing. We, it, or I should say, isn't the right size for an awful lot of parents. Right. And, uh, yeah. And, and I we, think judges yeah. probably run into the same issues. Um, you know, to be fair to to the judges, mm-hmm. you know, they don't have the answers either, <laughs> and they're trying to resolve. They're struggling with it. You yeah. know, it's a major issue for them. And and also, we we can't leave out of the equation. You said, you know, you are an attorney, but uh, we want to help the attorneys too. Uh, a lot of them. Uh, uh, you know, the judges kind of point the finger at the attorneys. The attorneys point the finger at the judges. Mm-hmm. We feel like parent advocacy groups like ourselves could really be an assistance in working with those single parents and uh, helping them uh, come up with ideas, inventive ways in which they could draft a parenting agreement, for an example, right. and uh, flexible solutions to maintaining their involvement with the other with the child. 
helping them communicate with one another. <laughs> sure, and also not leaving out of the equation. Not all, you know, we're not putting a halo over, you know, every non-custodial parent. You know, there's non-custodial parents that also need uh, a group like ours to uh, gently and supportively say, "Hey, here, you know, you might you might want to think twice about you know how you're handling things here." Uh, we can act as a um, our organization helps network parents while they're going through those transitions of divorce, and and it is helpful with them, you know, to help give them ideas not only how to deal with their ex or how to deal with their child, but also how to deal with themselves as single parents. Right, right. Do you um, are you aware of services that can help parents to um, to communicate and learn how to co-parent as divorced parents? Uh, well, I no, I, I mean there are there are some out there. Um, um, I you know our organization. Well, yes. Okay, our organization is an advocacy organization, but mm -hmm. it's so the emphasis is on advocating change. That's where we try to keep our focus. But we have relationships with the more, uh, or I guess we call it with the support groups. All right. Mm -hmm. So there are support groups out there. They um, some of them are just now forming. Uh, we have support groups in, for instance, in, in the Chicago area for non-custodial parents, mm -hmm. and uh, we would put people in touch with that kind of a support group. Uh, we have loose knit support groups within counties. Is that the sort of thing you were? Yeah, to? Okay. yeah. And I know in Missouri there's a large push for uh, mediation in some circumstances when parents are having disagreements over what we call a parenting plan or mm -hmm. you know the parenting agreement that they work from, uh, and they send them to mediation to uh, try to help them talk through their issues. Mm -hmm. well, well, Illinois has been a pro mediation state for a long time. It, for in the past, I can't remember exact number of counties. I think it was 19 uh, counties for a number of years had a mandatory mediation. That'd be three sessions. You go to mediation before you end up in, <coughs> before you can come into court. Um, that's been expanded. Uh, our understanding is uh, recently expanded to cover uh, all of Illinois. Uh, it'll take a while to get it implemented in some counties. Uh, it is very helpful. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think the county I'm in, in McLean, has been a mandatory mediation state for a long, for quite a while. And those mediation, those three mediation periods that are mandated are very helpful. However, we also recognize from what we see happening in, in other states, other programs from New York to state to Iowa, that um, it, mediation is not counseling and it's not right. education. Right. And so we, we have more needs than just what mediation will help. And I've had judges order my, my people to go to counseling to go to family counseling. Right. I mean, that has been done. It, it can be helpful. Right. Yeah. Um, can you tell us, for those people out there who want to know how to get involved in your organization, how would you go about doing that? Very easy. Uh, go to any search engine, and uh, in fact, I might even try it right here, and uh, type in uh, Children's Rights Council of Illinois. That's one way. Um, the other way is to uh, go to the national um, organization, which is uh, children's, the, just the Children's Rights Council, mm -hmm. and their website is uh, go uh, crckids.org, uh, or someone can go directly to our site without going through a search, en search engine. It is equalparentingillinois.org. And uh, I know that URL throws people off. They say, 50, what do you mean by equal parenting <laughs> Illinois? But what we mean is we really want a greater balance here. The parents are equal in the eyes of their children, and that's what children want. Okay. So. And how can they help? How can those people who want to get involved, and, and you know, what can they do? Oh, uh, well, a lot, especially if they happen to be a family court judge. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the ideal? <laughs> <laughs> that would be ideal. Um, <laughs> You know, we need people to help us with outreach. We need people with good speaking skills, writing skills, uh, with energy, with uh, passion for this uh, subject, and, and willing to listen and willing to uh, listen to others about some po possible solutions. We need, we need good activists, basically, uh, to work with us. Uh, we do have our board of directors. We're not, we are a recognized not-for-profit corporation, duly incorporated in the state of Illinois. Okay. And, we, and we do have a, a full slate of directors from uh, Naperville all the way to south of Decatur, um, Illinois and central Illinois. But there's large areas of Illinois. We don't have a lot of representation yet, So, and even within those areas. So we can always use new members, and we can always use activists to help, uh, f uh, help in outreach activities and help and put together 
county support groups and things like that. So you're counting 